Something that irritates me to no end is seeing adults fail to properly manage their finances. And when I say adults, I'm talking 18 year olds and up. There's such a huge disconnect between what should be happening and what is actually happening because what actually happens as a result of failing to manage your finances is debt, living paycheck to paycheck, or both. And because of those two things, it seems like we've all just gotten into the habit of saving money and working to pay off debt and that's it. That's where all the financial goals and aspirations start and end, right there. And a lot of us don't realize it, but there's more to life than that. And if only you knew how to build wealth at a young age, as a teenager, as a 20 something year old, even if you're in your 30s, if only you knew how to build wealth that early on and you started early, you wouldn't have to worry about holding on to every penny and worrying about getting out of debt, now would you? Well, I'm about to show you exactly how to build wealth at a young age. Hey, what's up? My name is Reggie Bryant, and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. It's all about personal finance and personal growth so you can better yourself every single day and live life on your own terms, and we're about to get into it. So when you talk about building wealth, you're talking about something that just doesn't seem obtainable to the average person. You gotta understand that this is something that most people never achieve in their entire lives. So with that said, you're gonna have to go into this with a totally different way of thinking than normal. So the first step of building wealth is asking yourself this question. What are most people my age doing? What are most 18 year olds doing? What are most 20 something year olds doing? And whatever the answer is, I'd advise you to do the exact opposite. The opposite of playing video games every single night and partying on the weekends is seeking knowledge and understanding, and that's picking up a book and becoming financially literate instead of picking up a beer. You have to move different. Like, you have to put more time into bettering yourself because that's what it takes to succeed in life and get to where you want to be. There's absolutely no way around it. You have to self-improve, and that requires you to focus on yourself. Forget about what they're doing. Listen, you are younger than you will ever be again for the rest of your life. And that means you have two massive advantages over those who are older than you, and that is time and energy. So why waste all that partying or relaxing all the time because you're so tired? Why waste all that on worrying what other people think, worrying what other people, other guys and girls your age have, and why are you worrying about what people your age are doing? And I know that might be easy for me to say right now, but look, I used to struggle with that myself. I mean, I was doing the work since day one. I would be going to the library, I'd be reading, doing assignments, learning new skills. Then I would go hit the gym, I would get my workout in and I'd spend like an hour there. Then I would go to practice, I would go to work. I mean, I had a lot of stuff on my plate in college and it wasn't like I was doing light credit hours. I was doing like 16 credit hours. So I had all these classes, all these projects and I had social events, I was in a fraternity. I had all kinds of stuff going on. But then I'd look over at my friends and they'd just be chilling. They'd be laughing, watching movies, drinking beer, playing Smash Bros on the game. I mean, I, a part of me wanted to join them. But I would not allow myself to join them unless my work was done, unless I felt accomplished and fulfilled for that day. I, I mean, if, if neither one of those lined up, I didn't join them. And that's what I'm talking about. It's about discipline. That's what it's all about when you're first starting. And I'm talking about the discipline to stay healthy, to eat right, to work out. I'm talking about the discipline to continuously improve at your craft, but also to continuously improve yourself. I'm talking about seeking guidance and mentorship from somebody who is wise, somebody who can put you in a position to be even better than you can make yourself because you can't do it all by yourself. This is called the learner's mindset, and this is the bread and butter of building wealth. Every single successful and wealthy person I know have this exact mindset. And the, the difference between a lot of them is some of them develop this mindset much later in life. And that's something that a lot of them beat themselves up over is not developing this mindset sooner. Look, I'll tell you this. Check this out. When I was younger, I used to get caught up in what I like to call comparison traps. And I mean like in any way, shape or form. I would compare myself to others, whether it's public speaking or how high someone's grades are, or how smart I thought I was compared to other people, or how strong I was, how much I could lift in terms of weight compared to other people, how much money I made compared to other people, like what other shoes or what types of cars people had. I mean, seriously, I would, I would do this. And I'll admit, I was pretty ridiculous, but I felt like I was in competition with everyone around me. 
That's the trap you need to avoid when you're building wealth because that trap is a money pit and if you fall in it, you will fall hard and most people never get out of it. That's the downfall to 90% of adults right there comparing themselves to others and this comes from both a mental and financial standpoint. And the reason this can be so detrimental is because the number one rule to building wealth is living below your means. Okay, so let me ask you this. How are you going to live below your means when you're constantly trying to keep up with everybody around you and what they have? How? How are you going to live below your means when you're buying stuff constantly just like they are? Guess what? Life is not a competition. And this goes all the way back to the beginning of the video when I said that this irritates me to no end because right there is exactly where the financial journey for most adults ends. Right there. Because now they're spending majority of their lives saving money so they can eventually get out of debt. Why are they in debt? Because they keep purchasing things that they don't need to impress people who frankly don't even care. And I'm speaking in general terms. There's a few exceptions, but come on. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You know what happens most of the time, right? You buy a new Mustang, you buy a new Range Rover, cool. People are in awe for like a few seconds. What happens after those seconds pass? They go right on with their lives and they never think about the car again. Same thing with clothes, same thing with any form of instant gratification. What most young people want is bragging rights. That new iPhone that just came out, they want it so they can flex on everybody. And hey, I'm, I'm not judging or anything. I'm just telling you straight up, that is how most young people think. And that's cool and all, but if you're trying to build wealth, that's a pretty dumb way of going about it. I mean, I don't know. Something just seems counterintuitive to me about spending money to appear as if you're wealthy only to have 20 bucks to your name. Instead of keeping up appearances, the best thing you can do is save as much money that you earn from your job as possible. If you still live with your parents, see if you can save 50% of your income. If you're out on your own already, see if you can save 10, 20, 30% of your income. That way you don't have to worry about figuring out how to save money at a much later age. You're already getting into the habit of doing it as you're young. That way you're going to have a nice nest egg set to the side much earlier in life. And then whenever you do get into your own place or if you're already living in your own place, make sure you keep your expenses low so that you don't have to end up living paycheck to paycheck. And it's extremely important to figure these things out at a young age because you'll have all the momentum in the world to stay ahead of the game financially. Let me break it down for you. You have expenses that are necessities like rent, utilities, food, transportation, and insurance. Living below your means is positioning yourself so that you're in a situation where your rent or mortgage does not eat your income alive. Living below your means is not going out there and finding an apartment that has two bedrooms and you're the only one that's living there only to say, well, you know, I can afford it. That's not the point. You're paying for more space than you actually need, especially when you're just getting started out. And hey, I made that mistake when I was 21. That's exactly why I'm telling you about it right now. And keep in mind, I didn't have roommates. I had a two-story, 1,182 square foot townhome all to myself, knowing good and well that a 700 square foot single bedroom apartment would have been plenty of space for me. My point is I would have paid a lot less for rent every single month if I would have just taken the single bedroom apartment. And what still irritates me to this day about the decision I made when I was 21 was the fact that I had two bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms in my townhouse. And I would go weeks without even going into the other room. So basically I was just wasting money on extra rooms that I wasn't even using in the first place. And another thing, living below your means is also understanding that, yeah, you might be making some pretty good money, but that does not mean that you go out and show it by owning more things. Because the reality is the more things you own, the more things own you. I mean, think about it. You're one person. One person who wants to build wealth who isn't exactly financially established yet. So why then would it make sense to buy two cars? So now you have two cars that require regular car maintenance. Now you have more car insurance that you have to pay for. And now you have more gas that you pay for over time because you have two vehicles now. What I'm saying is you have more expenses now. And here's the thing, you might be able to afford it. That's cool. I could afford my townhouse, but I was not living below my means. And you know what else? Going out all the time just because you can or just because it's the weekend is not living below your means. 
you know, it's pretty counterintuitive to go out partying when you have work that needs to be done, money to make, a purpose to pursue, and you're not even celebrating for anything. What are you celebrating for? By the way, if you learn nothing from this entire video, here's a pro tip. Never celebrate for no reason. That is the biggest waste of time I think there is. I mean, seriously, just because it's the weekend, just because you've had a long, tiring week, that, that does not mean it's time to celebrate. It's not if you're trying to build wealth. Man, that's completely off the table. And when you have that mindset, that strong discipline that says, I'm not going to celebrate for no reason. If I have work to do, that's what I'm going to be doing. When you have that mindset, people are going to talk about you. They're going to say stuff like, man, you never want to do anything. You're no fun. Man, what are you always so busy doing all the time? Achieving my goals. I got goals to achieve. That's how you build wealth. You build a very strong discipline about yourself. You get into the habit of doing work that provides value. You figure out how you can improve yourself and learn more skills and you ignore all of the outside noise that tries to convince you that you should be doing something else. That's cold. You build wealth by investing in yourself. And I'm not just talking about money, I'm also talking about time. I mean, you have free time right now and who's to say in 10 years, you, you might not even have that type of free time because you might have other responsibilities that take your time away from you. you. You might have kids, you might have a big family, you might be married, you might have a job that requires so much of your time that you don't have any kind of time to invest in yourself. Well, guess what? You have time right now. Right now, you have the time to improve. You have time to go to YouTube and learn a new skill or buy a course and learn something new, anything new. Man, do you know how much time I have spent learning new skills just on YouTube, whether it was buying courses or talking to people? I learned Microsoft Excel. I learned how to speak in public. I learned how to edit videos. I learned how to improve my interviewing skills. Are you going to tell me that these are not valuable skills? But it doesn't even have to be stuff like that. You can learn how to do digital art. You can learn how to code. Like nobody knows how to code nowadays. I mean, it is something of a superpower. If you learned how to do that, think of how much more valuable you would be. I also invested my time in learning about 401ks, which I literally did not learn until I was 21. And by the way, if you want to build wealth, there's honestly no easy way to say this. So you better have a retirement account set up like a 401k or a Roth IRA because you're young and right. What do young people have in their favor right now? Time. That's how investments work. The earlier you invest, the more you're going to have in the future. And the key here is to actually make sure you're investing a percentage that you know for a fact that your company is going to match. So that way you're literally getting free money on top of what you're contributing out of your paychecks. And that's also on top of the interest that your money is already going to be gaining by being in an investment account. Don't be like most 20-something-year-olds and say, oh, I'll worry about that when I'm older. That is the wrong way of thinking about this. And you know, I've sat down with a bunch of men and women to go over this, and they range from the ages of 24 all the way to 44, and they all had one thing in common. None of them had their 401k set up for work, like never set one up in their entire lives. Do you want to know the number one reason why that I got 10 out of 10 times? I didn't want them to take more money out of my paycheck. That's not thinking with the future in mind. That's thinking about right now and solely right now about what inconvenience you'll have because the company took a small percentage of your paycheck away. And I don't have to tell you, that will obviously keep you very far away from building wealth. I mean, God forbid that your company puts 8% of your paycheck into an investment account that they match you on that grows to hundreds of thousands of dollars within just a few decades so that you can retire. God forbid. And that's exactly what I'm saying. We're stuck in the mindset of, well, well I want to keep more. Well, guess what? Keeping more now can hurt you in the future. That's why it's important that you invest. You also need to take a skill or a talent that you've learned over the years and figure out a way to monetize them. And I can't stress this enough because when you monetize a skill or knowledge or a talent, you're adding value to more people and you're essentially adding more value into your life because you're adding more money and more security into your life. And the reason I stress this so much is because look at what every look at everything that happened in the year of 2020. There's so many valuable lessons that were taught, but the, the valuable lesson that I got out of 2020 is that we all need to build more than one stream of income because one stream of income can get cut just like that. 
out of our hands, and now we're sitting there trying to figure out what we're going to do. My brother developed the skill of making beats. He would just spend like hours in his rooms coming up with, with different sounds, different mixes, different rhythms, and he figured out a way to create his own unique sound that only he could produce. And guess what? People really liked his work, so he started charging them $40 per beat. Since out of college, I've spent years studying and studying personal finance and investing and studying human psychology and just what we've been conditioned to believe and how we've been conditioned to operate throughout life that has a negative effect on our monetary gain in life. And it leads us down the wrong road and it leads to a bunch of negative and bad money habits that leads us to being broke. And since I spent so much time learning and applying different methods of personal finance and saw what works, what doesn't work, and what I agree with and what I disagree with, I am now able to educate people on this. And guess what? I monetize that. But I have an entire video on monetizing skills and talents and knowledge. So if you want to check that out, look at my video on Side Hustles. Go watch that right after this. By the way, this video is cold. Y'all know it's cold. Leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. Outside of all of that, you need to figure out a way to invest your money outside of work into the stock market in some way, shape, or form. And look, I know that can sound really intimidating. I know there's a bunch of economic things that can affect the stock market, but despite the fact that it's intimidating, despite the fact that it's unpredictable, I think it's an extremely important skill to learn. And that's where the learner's mindset comes into play. So when you realize you're lacking in a certain department within personal finance or really any area of your life, you can pick up books and learn about these things that you're lacking knowledge in. I mean, seriously, you could go to the library right now and pick up a book and educate yourself on terminology around stocks, when to hold, when to sell, if you should even be buying individual stocks or if you should invest in something else. I mean, come on, we all have access to endless amounts of information about literally anything that we could ever want to know. But why don't we take advantage of it? Why? Because no one's doing it and no one really ever thinks to do it. We kind of just copy what other people do because we follow what the masses do. And that's exactly why I said think about a person who is your age and ask yourself, what are they doing? And then do the opposite because the whole point is, you have to move completely different than everyone else is if you want to build wealth at a young age. But that's why I'm here to encourage you to continuously educate yourself on what you lack knowledge in, whether that's reading articles or reading books or just talking to somebody who's extremely knowledgeable and has showed success within that area. But if investing in individual stocks really makes you feel uncomfortable, then I totally get it. There's also the option of looking in the index funds, and I would recommend looking for one that follows and mimics the exact index of the S&P 500. And without boring you to death, that means that you're putting your money into a safe investment that has historically and very consistently performed very highly. I mean, it gives an annual return of 10% consistently over the past like 100 years. And that's through any depression, recession, or any kind of economic downturn that you can think of. So Definitely consider researching before you even listen to what I have to say about it. Do your own research about it, but I'd highly recommend that because that, that is honestly the best bet when you're first getting started out. So in addition to having a strong disciplined mindset and having a learner's mindset, you have to do the work. You have to take action. You have to be stubborn and unwavering in your pursuit of building wealth at a young age because it's something that is so uncommon that most people are not going to be used to seeing that. Because it goes against their natural way of thinking. It goes against everything they've ever been taught. And people think it's weird. People are going to think that you're weird. It's up to you if you're going to care about that or not. You take all that knowledge, you live below your means, and you make sure that you're investing in your 401k as early as possible. Or a Roth IRA. And you spend time and effort developing skills outside of work, outside of your main hustle, you apply those skills and you monetize off of them to build another stream of income. And then you figure out how to how to even maximize more off of that and rinse and repeat until you can build multiple streams of income. And then make sure that you're able to with, with some of the money that you're making from your side income and from your main income, make sure you put that into the stock market somehow, some way, not all of it, but invest a certain percentage of your money. That, my friend, is how you build wealth. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Stay cold.